Let's do this. Let's do this. The React Miler arrives on the scene. I'm a little surprised actually. I was not expecting another new running shoe from Nike, but there it is, the React Miler. Uh, I'm, I actually, I have no clue at this point until I go run in it where this shoe could fit into the running shoe rotation. So we're going to figure that out together today here on the vlog. And yes, oh yeah, here is the Infinity Run from earlier in 2020. All right, both you see the bars there at the back of the heel counter, so it'll be interesting to see the differences between these two shoes, uh, both coming out in 2020. And yes, I cannot resist comparing the new React Miler to, of course, the Pegasus 37, okay? So I'll give you a full re uh, rundown as to how, <laughs> pun intended, rundown as to how the React Miler compares to the Peg 37 as well. Now, all three with React midsoles fascinating fascinating to see how nike is pushing react midsoles into their running shoe rotation now before we lace up the react miler and get going here i just i read your comments and i know there's always going to be a little concern a little pushback when i break down literally a running shoe so this is the pegasus 37 that i took apart i think it was three days ago now here is the upper and just so everyone knows, I keep these forever, okay? I don't throw this away, why? Because now I can take this and analyze it uh, to learn from, but also to compare it to the PEG 38, the PEG 39, the PEG 40. Um, it's all part of the education process for breaking down the shoes for you in the studio. So I just wanted to be clear, because I know there's always gonna be a little concern, a little pushback when I tear apart a shoe that is not completely dead yet. Um, I don't throw this away. I'll save it forever in this running shoe box. And it's part of the reason why I need a storage unit sooner rather than later. I'll pull this out in 2021 when I uh, pick up the Pegasus 38 for all of you. Does that make sense? All right, let's lace up. Here we go. Here we go, back into the studio. First impressions of the Nike React Miler. And everyone, I'm perplexed. How do running shoe companies create so many different running shoes that in my opinion, fall into the same or very similar genre within your running shoe rotation. We got the React Miler, the Infinity React, and the Peg 37. I'm also thinking of Asics in 2020, New Balance in 2020, like it's just amazing. And maybe it just comes down to economics, like shoe companies that are more well-established can create more running shoes for the rotation. But anyway, we'll get you my comparison to the Peg 37 and the Infinity React uh, toward the end of the vlog. And yes, as I'm uh, buying this shoe, the React Miler, in my mind, and don't, uh, don't judge a book by its cover, I guess is the lesson here. When I think of React Miler, what comes to mind for me, and maybe my mind is stuck in high school, like when I hear Miler, I think of a short, fast race, the 1600 me meters, the mile. Like, a, and so therefore I thought, okay, maybe this shoe is, uh, as far as the branding goes, they're going for like a fast, more up-tempo shoe. That is not the case, just so you know. Even though Miler is in the name of the shoe, uh, what I, th I guess they're going for is maybe so you can run more miles because some people are putting this shoe into the long run category just so you know i'll give you my thoughts and opinions on where i'm going to put this shoe in my rotation here in a minute but first let's drive drive in <laughs> drive in drop into the drop here we go 10 millimeter drop 31 millimeter stack height in the heel 21 millimeter stack height in the forefoot for that 10 millimeter slope inside the shoe pretty high for a trainer okay 10 millimeter drop for the weight we're looking at 9.2 ounces for women size 8 we're looking at 10.7 ounces for men size nine, and there it is on your screen in grams. And then in my size, I actually weighed it inside and I forgot to write it down, but I believe it was definitely over nine, I think 9.2, 9.3 in my size. There it is on your screen in grams. And onto that upper of the React Miler, here we go. The word that's jumping out at me is stout. Very high build quality through the upper 
on the on the React Miler. It's a double uh, layered mesh. Okay, what the uh, jacquard mesh is what they're saying officially. Uh, double layered. There's a overlay through the over the toe box. It did help keep a little bit of that mud and moisture out from last night's rainstorm. So that was good. Uh, through the eyelet chain where your laces go. Uh, it's a double, again, double reinforced eye stays. Very stout. You're not going to be pulling those laces out of that eyelet chain anytime soon. I can tell you that right now. Fully gusseted tongue, uh, which means the tongue is connected to the uh, inner wall of the upper just to help with a nice lockdown over the midfoot. It felt great. Uh, extra padding at the top. Actually, let me just feel here. Nope, at the, only at the top of the tongue there where the laces go right across the top of your foot. So it is padded, felt great, felt, felt great lacing up today. I'm gonna say plush through the collar and through the heel tab and the heel counter, okay? Plenty of padding there through the collar of the shoe. It did feel, I will say, lacing up and walking around before I started jogging today, it did feel a little stiff through the uh, heel counter. But sure enough, as soon as I started running, I forgot about it and didn't think about it the rest of the run. But it did feel a little stiff there through the heel counter. So bottom line, and I did use a runner's knot and it treated me well today. All right, I think that's the upper uh, inner lining. Not incredibly like screaming comfort, but uh, it did fine today as far as the inside of the shoe. And onto that midsole of the React Miler, it's a wider landing, just so you know, through the forefoot. So I noticed it today, my toes were splaying out and spreading out just a little bit more than compared to other Nikes. For example, compared to the Nike Pegasus 37. So if you have a wider forefoot, this shoe could work out for you. So my toes were spreading out, splaying out more so in the forefoot, so that was good. Uh, it's got this, what they're calling a heel clip, um, what I would call almost like a heel bar. And it's basically a hard piece of plastic that wraps around the heel counter to provide a little bit of stability. And I should have mentioned this at the beginning of the vlog. If you are a runner that prefers neutral running shoes, but just needs a little bit of stability to help through the foot strike, the React Miler could be for you. And in part because of this heel clip, which just provides a little bit of stability there through the heel. In addition, on the React midsole, it does have rocker geometry built into the design, meaning uh, that heel to toe, heel to toe design. And I must say, everyone, I wasn't going, I, I, oh yeah, today's run was 10 miles, about 745, 750 a mile approximately. There it is on your screen. And uh, as I was up on my forefoot, I was working pretty hard. But as soon as I kind of chilled out a little bit and started doing more of a heel strike and midfoot strike, it felt amazing. Like I could feel that rocker geometry. And just think of a think of a rocking chair. That's what they're talking about with that rocker geometry. So just that heel to toe, heel to toe, or midfoot to toe, midfoot to toe. So if you know you're a heel striker, and uh, then this could again be a shoe for you. And on the outsole, it's got a decoupled groove. I like that on the bottom of the React Miler, and plenty of rubber. Okay, this green and black here to protect that React midsole foam. Um, okay, I'll get to the durability prediction in one second. No issue. I could see the shoe actually doing really well in, even though in the mud today I was slipping around a little bit, but in like really wet conditions on pavement or concrete or a stone or something, I could see this shoe doing really well as far as grip is concerned. Durability prediction is that this shoe is going to go the distance, ladies and gentlemen. If you want a shoe that'll go 600, 700 plus miles, if not more. I really think the, the build quality of the upper, which is why the upper is just a little on the stiff side, I think uh, this. if you wanna buy one shoe for the next, let's say four months, I think this shoe could be for you. Now, how will I use this shoe moving forward and who is the shoe best for? Let me take the second one first, actually. Who is it best for? I think if you love, 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 love to feel secure through the lockdown over the midfoot especially then this is the shoe for you like i have i'm trying to think of another shoe where i have felt more locked down than this shoe today like it's just as again a stout upper and it locked on the top of my foot so so well frankly the kind of the opposite of let's say some sketcher shoes or even this atreyu okay just so you know like this is kind of a loosey-goosey upper which i also enjoy but if you really if you really love a good lockdown this is the shoe for you okay how will i use this shoe moving forward easy days uh, definitely not a tempo day. It's too heavy. And even for a long, I, you could use this for a long run shoe, but I tend to prefer 
at least under, really under like eight and a half ounces, probably between that seven and a half and eight and a half ounce mark for my size. And I just think that this shoe is a little bit heavy for a long run shoe. You know what it's actually reminding me of? And I don't mind running in the Vermeero 14 for long runs, uh, but I guess it's not my first option grabbing out of the closet, all right? So that's how I'll use this shoe. Uh, easy days for me. On to that price point, we're looking at $130, okay? Right at the upper, upper, upper echelon for a daily trainer for me. And really actually for an easy day shoe, I prefer like that 100 to $110 range. But so 130, if you do end up using this shoe for a daily trainer, I think the price, oh, if it was 120, that would be so, so much better. Uh, but $130 it is. And again, I think based on, I just feel, you know when you just hold a shoe and it feels like the construction is, is high quality, that's how this shoe is feeling uh, through the uppers, even through this React foam and definitely through the outsole. And before that question of the day, a quick comparison between the Infinity React, the Myler React, and the Pegasus 37. And I don't remember the exact weights for all three shoes, so here it is on your screen right now in my size, all right? So I can tell though, just by holding the shoe, that the Myler React is the heaviest out of the three. And again, so stout upper, not a stout upper. And this is why uh, I bought this shoe for True Love. I said in my full review of this shoe that based on the upper being really loosey-goosey, uh, that classic like booty style uh, upper, is that I bought this shoe for True Love because she was walking and jogging, okay? I think this is a great shoe for crossing over between walking, the gym, and jogging, all right? And then eventually I'll get True Love a shoe, probably like the Pegasus 37, once she really gets into running like 20 minutes straight, 30 minutes straight, okay? So here we go. Um, and then I'm gonna say my favorite out of the three, 100% is the Pegasus 37, uh, that Air Zoom bag through the forefoot really makes a difference. Um, the shoe is lighter absolutely than the Myler Re React and that is why I said the Pegasus 37. And also, I think um, the comfort level of the Peg 37 upper outweighs the Myler Re React. I think because of the bands, I love the bands and the, just the lockdown that the bands create in the Peg 37. And so that is why this shoe I think could be easy day shoe almost a tempo day shoe it's a little heavy but almost like it just has that type of pop to it through the foot strike so there you go if i had to choose one of them i'd go with peg 37 right now even though all three of these shoes can accomplish similar tasks within your training regimen all right does that help i hope that helps hopefully i didn't confuse anyone but it's a solid shoe a stout shoe if you want to buy one shoe for like the next six months I think this shoe could be your shoe. Like, um, I you know, it's not gonna be a blazing fast shoe for you, but as far as just getting the miles in day after day after day, I do think it is, uh, it is gonna be a high build quality for you. We'll get it to 50 miles, get you that full review. And uh, question of the day, how was your long run this weekend, all right? I bet a lot of you got a long run in this weekend. It was beautiful out. At least it was, well, it rained, I guess, yesterday, but it was a nice weekend here in Colorado. So I hope you had a great long run. Let us know, tell us a good story. And thank you for just being here day after day, everyone. Onward and upward, onward and upward. All right, we're gonna toss it back to my full review of the Nike Pegasus 37. Full review, Nike Pegasus 37, right there, right there, right there. Onward and upward, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.